of life in vain. And our, our nation, we need to pray for our nation today. Not only today, I know you're a praying people and we've had some great Sunday night prayer meetings, but I noticed on the internet a lot of our churches, a lot of our preacher friends that we know putting stuff on the Facebook or on the church websites and this, you know, this bringing the word of God to us to tell us, you know, that it's it's a person. It's not a it, it's not a thing, but it's a, it's a baby. It's a baby. And uh, our nation, you know, we're living in dark days, dark times. And this expanding, I, I don't know all the political things about it. I know it's a state, New York State, that did this, maybe the federal, may be able to push that back to where it was, but I'd like to see it pushed out completely, wouldn't you? Amen. Amen. And I believe we can begin to mobilize and begin to pray, believe God, and then you see uh, in Romans chapter 8, it talks about the laws of sin and death are the laws of spirit and life. Praise God. He said there's there now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who don't walk after the flesh. Don't walk after the flesh. All of these things, these laws and these uh, avenues that people have, you know, are of the flesh and definitely not of God. And I want to be on God's side, don't you? Follow God. Follow God. Praise God. Amen. And, and, and ask the Lord to touch us today. Praise God. I want you to look at a few scriptures with me today. We're starting the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 9 and verse 16, if you would. We want to look at that. Psalms 9, 16 and 17. And praise God. Amen. You, we're going to be reading several scriptures, but we'll read this one and get you set back down then. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Here I think that's the only place this word is in the Bible. Higagayan. Higagayan. Selah. We know Selah means to pause and think about it. But this word Higagayan means to moan. The moan, it's just, it's not really a word, it's just, it's a song, it's a psalm, and it means that whoever wrote this, they moaned when they said this, that the wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Amen. Would you pray, let's pray. Father, in the holy name of Jesus, God, I pray, ask you today to touch me. God, to help me to convey this word of God in such a way that it will have an impact. God, it will help someone. It will help God us as a body. Amen. To know what we need to be doing. God, we need to be active in our prayer life. We need to be active in uh, counseling those that we may have an opportunity to help and let them know that God, amen, will help them. God will touch them. God will meet every need according to his riches and glory in Jesus' holy name. Praise God. The nation, you can see the nations that forget God. You know, we've forgotten God. Our nation has turned away from God and completely going as a whole, going away from God. I want you to look at, uh, let's go to 1 Timothy. Got your Bibles with you there? Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 two, through 2. Paul said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing, seducing spirits, seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. Man, if I ever heard of a devilish spirit, we've heard of one in this new outbreak. Oh, seducing spirits and doctrines of 
devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. No conscience. The Bible talks about a nation, a people that couldn't, could no longer blush, could no longer, you know, be embarrassed. You know, anything and everything goes. So Paul continued on over in the second Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, Paul instructed Timothy, This know, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. You know, is anything ever selfish? Abortion is so selfish. Lovers of their own selves, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. But evil men, verse 13 in that same chapter, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse and be deceived. Worse and worse. I don't know in uh, on toward Revelation in the book of Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 3. It says, Knowing this verse, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Jude, the book of Jude, Jude, verse 17 and 8, 17 through 18. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you they would there would be mockers in the last day who would walk after their own ungodly lust. Own ungodly lust. God calls it an abomination. Going over into the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 6 and 16. 6 and 16. These six things that the Lord hate. You say, oh, I thought God was love. Them. God loves everything. Well, there's some things that are abomination to God. He said, these six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination to Him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that will be swift into the running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. But abomination, abomination unto God, hands that shed innocent blood. Psalms 9, go on to the book of Psalms, Psalms 9 and 17. 9 and 17 says the wicked shall be turned into hell. I know we've already read that. But the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Oh Jesus. What's, what's our duty to do? What is our duty? How should we respond as Christians? My wife, she spoke it up a while ago. Uh, in 2 Chronicles 7 14. If my people, if my people, you know, uh, we're Christians. God has uh, called us. We can't react in the flesh. We, we can do battle, but we can't do battle maybe like we used to when we was in the hood. If you was ever in the hood. Okay. Amen. But we've all sinned come short of the glory of God. We've all acted in the flesh. We've all fought back, you know, with muscles or guns or knives or, or just words. We, you know, some of us used to be the best cussers you'd ever want to hear cuss. If you want to hear anybody cuss. And I want you to raise your hand if you know it's the truth. But now that you're born again, you don't do that. 
Amen. You don't respond that way. You can't as a believer. But what? But you feel like it. You know, in issues like this, you oh, you would like to do something. But something that we do is we pray. We pray. We seek God. If my people, if my people, Second Chronicles seven and fourteen. And let's let's get into the context of this just a little bit. Uh, in verse twelve of that Second uh, Chronicles seven, but he says, "And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and he said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place, chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice." And God said, "If I shut up heaven." that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. In other words, when things get to going tough, you know, things, you know, pestilence, all these evil things that's going on now, if it happens, he said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon we can use. But we can mobilize how to begin to uh, get these scriptures together and I begin to think, well, uh, where is there a story somewhere in the Bible that would help us maybe to relate? And, and I think I can put it together. I think this works. It goes to 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. It says, there were four leprous men at the inner end of the gate. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? And if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die here. Now therefore come, let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. And if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come into the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Here's this and this. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. And a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host, and they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they rose up and fled in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their asses, even the camp it as it was and fled for their life. And the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise of the chariots. In the context of that scripture, Amen. Uh, Samaria, the northern kingdom of Israel, Samaria. Ahab's son, Jehotham, I think is how you pronounce his name. He was the king at that time. Uh, Ahab was the most wicked king that had ever been in Israel. Even in the context, you'll find that uh, Elisha even called Ahab that murderer. He's a murderer. And, uh, but the city, the, the nation of Syria had seized the city of Samaria. And I, I'll probably call Samaria, Syria, and a man, Syria, Samaria, but you know what I'm doing. Those of you who know me, you know how I do stuff like that. But anyway, they had, they had surrounded the city. They, they blocked it off. They were just waving them out because they were starting to death. They even got to the point 
you know, for 50 pieces of silver, you could buy a donkey's head for food. For five pieces of silver, and that's 50 pieces of silver, a lot of money. And uh, you can check it out, you can trace it down and find out what it would be in today's money, but it wouldn't be a lot of money for just a mule's head. One old preacher said, you know, you don't have to be too far from the country to know that there's not much meat on the mule's head. Yeah. Uh, two quarts of doves dumb. Doves dumb. Two quarts. Five pieces of silver. They're eating, eating manure to try to stay alive. And even, even converted to cannibalism. The king was out on the wall walking, praying. You know, trying to see if anything he could do to, uh, to relieve that. And two women came up. And they, one woman came up and began to call out to the king. King, king, oh king, help me. Help me. He said, what can I do? How can I help you? Can I give you something from the barn floor? Or, you know, we don't have, I don't have no way to help. He said, but she said, but oh king, listen to what we've done yesterday. My baby and I, another woman's baby. And we talked and I agreed that we would roast and eat my baby today. And we would roast and eat her baby tomorrow. And we boiled my baby and we ate my baby. And now she's Moran and he had and when the king heard that, he was so distraught, he just ripped his garment. And the Bible says some of the people saw that he had sackcloth. He was already in mourning. He was already doing, uh, you know, I guess what he knew to do. But people had even gone to low, so low as to eat their own baby. How can that be? But isn't that really... What's going on with America? Have we gotten to the point that we're cannibalizing? Amen. Killing our own children. I don't know how many millions that have been killed. But how does this story relate, Brother Richard? Well, you know those four lepers men. Man, they were in a, they were in a fix way. Like, he couldn't go back in the city. Nobody had nothing to eat in there. And if they sat there at the gates, the reason they sat at the gate, they was there begging, you know, for alms. No such thing as social income. No such thing as welfare. And they were trying to survive that way. But now, uh, you know, God had a plan. And they began, they made a decision. They began to move. They began to move toward the enemy. They made a move toward the enemy, toward the Syrian camp, the host that, man, uh, they just knew either they'll kill us or they'll give us something to eat. But the Bible says, and they rose up, they got up, and they began to go toward the camp of the Syrians. Amen. But when they got up, they began to go. It said the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. I'm going to believe today when we get up, we come down here and pray. I believe some of those congressmen and senators and presidents and amen, anybody that's involved with family planning and all that, Planned Parenthood, all that stuff, I believe they're going to begin to hear a noise. I believe God can deal with people in the night time. I believe God can wake them up in the middle of the night. You hear, you hear people dying on the operating table and there's books out. Hey Amen. The doctor got saved. He wasn't even a Christian, but he was kept people dying on the operating table and they'd shock them and bring them back and some of them would come back screaming my feet's on fire get me out of here and some would come back saying God why did you do that for us 
was, I was in the presence of God hearing the most beautiful music. And he, you know, he was trying to brush it off. He wasn't a believer. But he said one, one day, one of his guys came back screaming, God, you got pray for me. I got to get saved. Pray for me. And he said that he just said, well, I, I heard Christians say, say, the Almighty God forgive me my sins. And Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. And I accept that. And then that man prayed that prayer and he lost it again. And then he got him to come back again and he was so happy. Amen. It had changed everything. It changed everything. Hell is real. I'm telling you, God, God can change people's ways of thinking. God can wake up a nation if my people call to my name will humble themselves and pray. That's our battle plan. That's our battle plan. That's our to-go plan. Is to pray to God. And I believe God is as real as He had this enemy to get up and run. I believe God can put them on the run. These baby killers, murderers. Something's got to go a different way. Nation to turn to hell. I don't want to, I don't want this nation to go to hell because it seems like it's going that way. But we've got to warn people. We've got to do what we can do. You know, a few years ago down in Pensacola, Florida, some guy took a shotgun down on him where they had an abortion clinic and killed two or three people. That's not what we can do. We can't do that. But we can pray. God can begin to deal with people. I believe that, don't you? Will you believe that with me today? Praise God. We need, we need to turn around. And I just felt compelled today to just share some of these things with you, get you to agree with me. We're going to pray that God's going to deal with people, people in power, people in high places. Amen. He dealt with kings, dealt with armies, and he used some real people sort of down on the bottom, four lepers men. I don't know where I would even fit in on that, on that category, but I say, God, use me. God, use me. I want God to use me, don't you? I want God to use you. Well, he will. Will you stand with me while I get a song ready? Would you bring our prayer list down? I know we've got one down there. Bring two or three if you have them. Lay up here. We, I want you to come and help me pray today. And if you if you don't feel comfortable coming to the altar, just make you an altar right there where you are. Just sitting, standing, kneeling, whatever you do, however you can do it comfortably. Amen. The, the plan is, the, the prayer is, the prayer of faith. If my people call upon my name, praise God. Praise God.